Hi everybody, it's Miss Kaysen here. Here's our example. We've got 4 times 10 to the power of, neg of 3 over 10 to the power of negative 2, all raised to the second power. So I'm going to start with this negative exponent here. We've got 10 to the power of negative 2. Remember that if we move that exponent, or that whole entire power, to the numerator, we're going to change the sign. So we get 4 times 10 to the power of 3 times now 10 to the power of 2. Moving it to that numerator makes that negative 2 positive. Now we've got everything to the power of 2. I'm going to keep simplifying. I'm going to combine 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 2. That gives us 10 to the power of 5. Okay, now we're still squaring that. So instead of applying the power rule, just to make a better visual, I'm going to expand it out. So I have 4 times 10 to the power of 5 multiplied by itself, which is 4 times 10 to the power of 5. I know that doesn't look nice, but it's 10 to the power of 5. So remember, we're just multiplying, so we can use the commutative property of multiplication. I'm going to take 4 times 4, which is 16, and 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 5. Combining those exponents, we get 10 to the power of 10. But remember, this is scientific notation, so that first number right there, 16, can't be 16. We need to rewrite it as a number between 1 and 10. So that means that the decimal needs to be moved over 1. So instead of having 10 to the power of 10, right there we've got 16. We need to move that decimal over so it becomes 1.6. That means we need to add an extra exponent to the base 10 so that we get the same value that we started with. So now instead of 16 times 10 to the power of 10, we get 1.6 times 10 to the power of 11. And that's our final answer.